What is up guys, Cody here, and welcome back to the American Civil War. So today, we are on Antietam, and this is going to be Bloody Lane. So I'm going to be in command of the United States, and my opponent is going to be the Confederate. So, I'm going to be facing Proteus Valerius. He has a YouTube channel as well, posts a lot of Total War, so if you enjoy Total War and uh, want to watch some other people besides me, go check out his channel. It is awesome. Uh, so starting off with the battle, this is a scenario battle, and uh, the game has just started. So you can see I have a pretty decent sized right flank, I actually have a unit with 413 men, ridiculous numbers. Uh, I've unlibered my artillery already, and they're going to be bombarding Confederate positions right from the get-go. Uh, but you see Confederates are actually pushing past Bloody Lane, and they're actually going to be trying to uh, get a surprise attack, I guess. Uh, right now, it looks like Elite's going to try and push hard uh, and uh, hopefully beat my front lines before my reserves can get here. And you can see my reserves are now marching up, and they have some very, very high numbers. So, taking a look at the battlefield, engagement's already starting. I'm actually going to be pushing my lines up. I'm going to try and control this fence line because I know it is very, very important. Uh, but you can see Confederates, they are outnumbered. They don't have that many big units, but they have a ton of small units. Uh, you can see he's going to be setting up another artillery piece here, and they're going to be raining down hell on my positions. You see that first volley by these boys, North Carolina, getting a lot of kills, but I'm going to get some return volleys in, and with me being behind the fence line, that's going to help me out quite a bit, but look at how many shots are being fired right now. Down to 217 men, just like that. Guys dying and screaming. Very, very bloody. And you see, now I'm going to be trying to take hold of this fence line. I'm taking a lot of losses as I do push up. You see blood squirting everywhere. But I am starting to hold some better positions. But right now, he has a huge force moving on the right flank. This is his reserve force. And I'm going to counter that with my reserves. They are still marching up. I have some artillery here. I got a couple units heading over to the right flank. There are some hidden Confederates in the forest over there. So I do need to keep an eye out. But look at this. Confederate charge. Point blank volleys. And now I'm going to get a counter charge in. 110 up against 50. It looks like it should, uh, you know, be victorious from my side. Uh, but morale not looking good for the Union troops. I'm trying to bring my general over, General William. Uh, he's going to try and inspire the men, but just a little bit too late. And you see one of those units did break. Uh, and we still have the 6th Alabama there, but they did end up breaking as well under the pressure. I did have a reserve line here in New York here, and they were holding back the lines. But look at this, great positioning by the Confederates, setting up artillery dangerously close to my lines. And uh, he's going to get some fantastic canister shots in. And uh, we will see these volleys erupt. So here we go. First volley coming in. Ripping through my guys. Blood everywhere. And we have a counter charge here by the Confederates. They're actually shooting their own men. That is not good. Uh, but right now I'm going to be sending in two Union lines to try and counter these uh, Confederates. I'm also going to be trying to push up to the artillery. I don't want them shooting me in the back anymore. That is just horrible news. Uh, but sad news, I did lose the 8th Ohio. They are breaking. Uh, but luckily, uh, the 14th did prevail. And they're actually going to be charging into the artillery. But once again, another Confederate unit being pushed in. I'm sending over my artillery now. Uh, in the center, though, my guys are holding very, very well. It looks like the fence line's, you know, working to my advantage, and that's exactly what I want. Uh, but I have to be very cautious with my movements here. Artillery dangerously close to enemy lines. And you see I only have two Union lines defending up against a ton of Confederates. Over here, though, the uh, 14th did break. Confederates on the move right now. And I'm trying my best to get shots in. Another canister volley coming in from... The Confederate artillery trying to unlimber my guys. 
Fort, Fourth North Carolina being sent in. I'm going to try and shoot them down. Looks like they're running away, but here they come again, coming back towards my location. And can I get a volley off is the question. Cannon facing the wrong direction. But who cares? It can shoot backwards. So it looks like the Union has some pretty good technology uh, to kind of shoot behind <laughs> where they're aiming, which is very interesting. Uh, it's totally not a failure in game mechanics. Uh, and that is completely historically accurate. <laughs> uh, so with that charge, Confederates did break my artillery, but they did break themselves. And I'm hoping these guys do come back because uh, as of now, this Confederate artillery is still very strong. And I'm going to be charging in, but uh, we will see the devastation that unfolds with these canister volleys. But it looks like they're targeting the wrong unit. And it's going to allow me to get very close, but we here's the general. Confederate general charging in. Here he is, fighting for his fellow artillerymen. And he did end up dying, so one of the Confederate generals is dead. Anderson, Anderson excuse me, is dead. The Confederates breaking in the center, getting very, very weak. But as for my left, Confederates definitely do outflank me. And uh, at this time, I'm going to start charging or rushing my guys forward. I need these reserves to get to the front lines and hold off these Confederates as they do push up. My center flank and my right flank uh, are holding strong. But as you can tell, there's still a lot of Confederate reserves being sent in. And once again, another unit breaking. Confederates, though, in the center making a big push with a lot of units. Uh, looks like one of my units did break in the center, but they did break the artillery, and that's their whole goal. So, successful push on their end. Fourth New York in a 2v1 scenario, maybe even a 4v1. Uh, but they do have the manpower to keep up with the constant fire rate of the Confederates. Uh, on the right flank, not too much is going on, just pretty much a skirmish engagement. And right now, I'm trying to tank out these artillery pieces. Uh, you can see a couple guys dying here and then. But I just want them gone because, uh, as you can tell, he's continuing to blast my guys. I mean, this one volley just destroyed that entire line, basically. Uh, but my flank getting very weak. My artillery crew did come back. I'm going to be sending them back to their guns uh, to shoot at the Confederates. My reserves now pushing in. I am going to have no mercy for these Confederates. And now the numbers are really starting to, uh, you know, favor me. Uh, with those reserves. In the center though, numbers still fairly high. Confederates getting pretty drained. Uh, but just from the start, I mean, 75 guys per unit, that is not a lot. So, Confederates have very little to work with this, this map. Uh, but it looks like he's going to be retreating to the bloody lane, actually. Uh, and it looks like he has a secondary line here. Look at this. These guys are freaking massive. 340 men in this unit. They can do is some serious damage. So, it's time for me to get my own canister volleys in, and here I go. So, I'm limbering my artillery piece. And I'm going to get some payback for what these Confederates have done to my boys. And uh, it's time to return the favor. So, on the left flank, lots of guys about to engage. Uh, Confederates still not taking many losses, but after this volley... They're going to start dropping like flies. A lot of men dying. Reserve lines being sent in now into the center where it is pretty weak on my end. I need the center to hold so I can start collapsing the left and right flank. But with just that one volley, instantly dropping a lot of these confederates into red morale. And that's something you never want to see out of your men. Uh, but like I said again and again, they are getting very low on numbers, so... Not too much they can do there. On the right flank, managed to break the artillery piece. Was very to ha very happy to see those guys go. Uh, but now my reserves are being sent in closer and closer to the battlefields. And at this point in time, Confederates thinking of a charge. They do not want me to get my volleys off. So I'm actually going to try and counter that. And let's take a look. Will these boys be able to get a point blank volley in? We will see. So forming up the lines. Here they go. Charging in. Complete bloodbath, point blank shots straight into the Confederates. So close to making it into melee combat without me shooting, but uh, luckily I did get that volley off, and just like that, center is collapsing. 
Confederates retreating from the battlefield. That was a devastating volley. I mean, look at all those losses right there uh, from that volley. Ridiculous. So continuing to push up my lines, artillery getting some really good shots in. But now with the center collapsing for the Confederates, they have no choice but to fall back. Losing on pretty much every side of the battlefield. They're going to need to retreat, like I said, back to Bloody Lane. And actually cause it to be a pretty bloody lane. So artillery. Once again, another Confederate artillery piece here. Now the one advantage the Confederates do have is the amount of artillery pieces. And you can see he is definitely not lacking behind. Uh, I already routed two units and he still has four more. So it's definitely going to be a hard time breaking through the lines, especially with Canister. Uh, but I'm hoping I can push these Confederates back on the left flank. You see, I'm really pushing hard. I know my guys are tired, but uh, they can suck it up and just fight on. Because I know my boys can get through it all. Uh, numbers still very high, 195, 174, 163. I mean, just super high numbers uh, compared to these Confederates with about maybe 50 on average. Uh, so now I'm pushing up towards Bloody Lane. Confederate lines in the cornfield, so good hiding place, but uh, luckily bullets don't get stopped by corn, as sad as it may sound for the Confederates, uh, but they're going to get slaughtered, and the morale is dropping left and right for the Confederates. They don't have their generals too spread out right now. It looks like the main uh, section for the generals are in the center. Uh, but I can see why the enemy player is doing that to try and keep the morale high near the artillery because you guys don't want those guys routing. Uh, so on the left flank, red morale all around and just a chain route of troops. 30, I mean, these numbers are way too low and uh, definitely makes sense why these guys are breaking from the battlefield. And just like that, with a couple of volleys off the Union lines, left flank is completely gone. So taking a look at the map, pretty much the center and the right side is gone so now my other side is going to be pushing in I do need to be cautious of this flank though there are some really really massive confederate lines here that are hiding and they should pop out there's one of them with 250 men so definitely need to be cautious there I'm actually going to be falling back a tiny bit to this fence line I need to get as much uh, of a defense position as possible, but once again, artillery from the Confederates pounding my positions as I do push up closer to their line. So here we go, four units, very healthy too. I think this is probably the strongest side for the Confederates at the moment, and easily a thousand men are on this side of the battlefields. So seeing that, I'm going to fall back because I am actually outnumbered now. And right now, I'm going to be waiting on my left flank to push up. Uh, here goes the artillery. Continuing to blast my guys. Good volleys there from the Confederates. And it looks like they're going to be countered. And some more Confederate troops pushing through the cornfields. But I have some very, very heavy reserves. Got another general back here enjoying his view. Uh, I see a couple dead Union soldiers. Uh, but he's just going to be chilling out here under the shade. Uh, he's a pretty lazy general, so he's going to enjoy himself and uh, I guess have some nice food. <laughs> some nice food and drinks. So, the center right is starting to collapse for me. I actually had quite a few broken units here. Uh, but luckily they did come back to the battlefields and right now... <laughs> The Walker's Division is absolutely destroying my 3rd Division. And just like that, that unit's going to break. And it looks like a chain reaction. 4th New York barely holding on. Still fairly high numbers for that unit. But right now, my left flank is kicking some serious Confederate ass right now. Uh, there goes the artillery. And soon to follow this other Confederate unit. General trying to inspire his men as best as possible. I actually did send in my own general. I actually broke two units, but the general did break himself. And William H is out of here. He's going back, back to the north to tell Abe what is going on. But here we go. The 11th coming in, going to try and counter the 27th. But the chain reaction is just continuing for the Confederates. 
And the number is just lowering and lowering by the seconds. So, right flank for it. The Confederates pretty much gone at this point. Just have a couple more units here. Uh, but the left flank still very healthy, and uh, this battle is nowhere near to being over. So let's get a close-up look at what's going on down here. Artillery exploding. Excuse me, very close. And there goes another unit. My men are just overwhelming in numbers right now. Here we go. On bloody lane. Couple losses here and there, but for the most part, it seems to be very, very few losses. Most of the combat's happening actually uh, in front of the lane or the road. Uh, but another big push here by me. This time, looks like Confederate artillery is limbering up. They are out of here. Seeing that the Union <laughs> Union line's getting very close, uh, so they're going to double time and get out of. That and uh, probably push over to the left flank where uh, things are a bit more secure. So push here by the Confederates. I see this. I'm actually going to be pushing up my artillery and falling back my lines. I want to get an evenly distributed line so I can counter these uh, Confederates as they do push up. Look at down a couple of my Union guys, but nothing too significant. Over here we have a melee charge, 104 up against 36, looks like the confederates do win but they're about to get pinched on both sides by two more units as they do come in and there they go, breaking from the battlefields and running back. My general actually getting shot at, is this him right here? Yes it is, where is he? No this is him, he's taking some straight volleys, maybe the artillery is actually targeting him out right now. It might be. Confederates getting very desperate on what to do, so they're going for the weak spots, the cheap shots. And uh, hopefully can turn the tide of the battle, but it is going to be taking every inch uh, and heart for the Confederates to beat back this Union force, because right now they are drastically outnumbered. Uh, but we can see just how well uh, these artillery pieces do. At least doing a really good job at keeping these guys alive and actually staggering them. So if one artillery piece does fall, he'll have another one to rely on. But here we go. First shot being fired just overhead of the Union positions. A couple more coming in. And just missing. So we will see this push sending over three units. I just want to show you guys the devastation this artillery can actually cause. These guys are howitzers, so they can't shoot canister, but uh, the closer you get to them, the more accurate they are. So, let's just show you the devastation. I have three lines here, both with some pretty healthy numbers, both in the hundreds. But uh, let's take a look after this next volley is fired. Actually, the general's going to be coming in. He's going to try and slow down the process of this charge. Here he goes. Look at that volley ripping through my guys. Another one. Devastating. So Confederate General pushing in, here he is, and he is dead. He actually did break the 64th New York, but can they fire another volley is the question. And it looks like they will not be able to, my guys will prevail. Uh, but over here another push by my guys, charging in, and he is turning his cannons around to engage. Couple of them getting shot as they do push in, but let's check out this volley. Actually shooting his own guys. Wow, ripping through his own men. Complete savages right there, but a charge here by the Confederates pushing in 37 up against 116. Confederates did get that charge bonus. Will it be enough to break the Union line? We will see, and it looks like he might. He actually will, so those guys did break. So definitely outnumbered, but with that charge, it did help him out. But point blank volleys by my lines. Confederates once again making it into melee combat, getting that charge bonus. 23, 21 men up against 190. Now a little bit more reasonable. These guys will break. 
by the looks of it, just don't have the manpower to continue that charge. And once again, another artillery piece engaging. So with that artillery, or howitzer piece gone, we still have another one to deal with. Two more, actually. But now I am really starting to cause a lot of damage. So about maybe five units left. Six units left for the Confederates. And it looks like it's going to be a clear victory for the Union. But the tide is going to turn. A little bit of a spoiler alert. <laughs> so here we go. Some more artillery. Look at that volley. I mean, just take a look at how high those guys went and the damage that was caused by it. I mean, that is just ridiculous. These guys are so accurate when you get close. And I'm surprised these guys are not breaking after seeing their guys go flying. I mean, good 50 yards, if not more. I mean, that was a ridiculous shot. But my guys do make it into melee combat. But check this out. So we have another artillery piece here. And I have a ton of Union lines. I'm feeling very confident. My guys do have some pretty good morale. And uh, the last thing I'm thinking of is a chain route. So that volley getting a two in one. Men dropping like crazy. Look at the bodies just dropping. Uh, so I'm going to be charging in. Just take a look at that. Easily 50 plus men dead with just those shots. Probably not the best idea to charge in like a blob like this. But check this out. So 19 guys up against maybe about 5 units. Uh, morale's already just starting to drop for the Confederates. And they are in melee combat right now. My guys are very vulnerable from an attack. And look at this. 46 men up, about, up against about maybe 5 Union lines. This is just ridiculous. Look at all these guys. All these guys up against 46 guys. Look, this is ridiculous. So they're going to be charging in, or actually reforming the lines. One unit breaks on its own. Others have bad morale, and they have super high numbers. There goes another two. And there's still one more left, and they all break like this. Like, what is going on? 46 men are going to actually mass route an entire... <laughs> group of units I mean that is ridiculous these guys just have must must be so scary to the Union soldiers it must be like casting something at them or something to make them route but I mean just look at that 46 guys breaking all of these Union troops now as crazy as this may sound this really did not hurt me much at all as you can tell I still have a ton of units ton of reserves still being sent in uh, so even though I lost a ton of guys with that just scare tactic, I still have a lot left. So we're going to fast forward, wait for the action excuse me, action to pick up a little bit more. Uh, but only five units left for the Confederates. They're actually going to be falling into the forest. Pretty smart move here. Now, this, this is Duncan's Church, so really badass. If you guys do watch... My War of Right videos, this will look extremely familiar to you. And they even have the doors in the right positions. Uh, this is actually where you would spawn as a Union soldier. I mean, this is so badass. They have the fence line down in everything. Cornfield to the left. But check this out. You just push down here. This looks all too familiar. They have the exact same fence lines. You got the woods here. You can flank around. This is where the Confederates usually spawn. And here is the church. I mean, how badass is that? This is where the Confederates are. Even have the hill here for where we spawn in. I mean, that is ridiculous. So just to put that into perspective, uh, the mod creators for this map did a fantastic job. I mean, every inch of this is just perfection. Everything is just so well organized and placed. Just a fantastic job by these creators. Uh, so with that being said, and getting back into the battlefield, only four units left. I am out flanking and uh, out gunning these confederates, so they can't put up a defense in the church, sadly, so they're going to stick outside in the woods. But I just have too many men, and uh, they are about to break. I mean, just so cool to see. This map is just so accurate. 
two units left. One unit left. 25th North Carolina. Last unit left on the battlefields, and there they do go. So that is the game, guys. Uh, was a really, really fun match, and I definitely had a blast. So uh, Edwin on top, getting 2,700, almost 2,800 kills. And then James Longstreet coming in close behind, 1,500 kills. But taking a look at the losses, historically there's about 5,000 dead. And this pretty much matches up. So even though the Confederates really didn't hold, uh, you know, the lane as, you know, historically accurate as it was, uh, they, we were able to get a pretty accurate amount of deaths. So that is pretty cool to see. Uh, taking a look at the unit statistics, 200... Oh man, 262 kills from the 3rd Division. Great job by them. And I'll scroll down for you. A lot of units. Artillery really doing a bad job. Not killing anyone here. And only killing two with that other unit. So, my line of infantry did do most of the work. This one getting 31 kills. But that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying... Uh, these scenario battles and comment below what scenario battle you guys want to see next uh, Until then guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys later